Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 132. On Now You Know. Brought to you as always by... Our amazing, wonderful Patreon patrons who support us every week and by our friends at the solar powered hotel in schaumburg illinois the fairfield inn and suites by marriott the hotel that's covered with solar panels and has ev chargers out front and this week is also brought to you by a betterrouteplanner.com are you going on a road trip in your ev use a betterrouteplanner.com really great for road trips and any trip where you're like am i gonna make it Yes, you will probably be able to make it um, using a better route planner. Works for all EVs, not just Teslas, so check it out. So in case you're wondering, the big story this week is the Model Y reveal, and we're going to be covering that on In-Depth tomorrow. So check that out tomorrow. Hit subscribe if you want to check that out. All right, so Tesla is not closing as many stores as they originally said they were going to close. Or are they? Yes, they are. No, they're not. Yes. No? <laughs> Yeah, no, maybe. Yeah, it is a very confusing time for people who work at Tesla stores yeah. um, or for people who are interested in Tesla and yeah. their stores. Are right, they well, closing? Let's, let's, are they not let's closing? Let's go right to the word of Tesla yes. here. So on March 10th, Tesla posted a blog post, and this is what they said. Over the past two weeks, we have been closely evaluating every single Tesla retail location, and we have decided to keep significantly more stores open than previously announced as we continue to evaluate them over the course of several months. When we recently closed 10% of sales locations, we selected stores that didn't invite the natural foot traffic our stores have always been designed for. These are stores that we would have closed anyway, even if in-store sales made up our entire sales model. A few stores in high visibility locations that were closed due to low throughput will be reopened, but with a smaller Tesla crew. In addition, there are another 20% of locations that are under review, and depending on their effectiveness over the next few months, some will be closed and some will remain open. So most of the stores will remain open, all sales will still be done online, so there's really what they should have done is just that quote, except just do that and don't say anything about it. So there's an SEC filing recently from Tesla that showed that they have $1.6 billion in current lease agreements and they have $1.3 billion of rent due. So basically what that means is if they had closed all these stores, they would have had to still pay, pay over the billion dollars of rent mm. on stores that were now closed. So here's my question. Why wasn't there a report or a meeting that took place before the announcement where they went, uh, guys, right. uh, if we close those stores, we still have to pay a billion dollars. Right. It, it doesn't take a lot of thinking to kind of get to that point where you're like, closing stores would be great. And then you go, wait a minute. If we were to close the stores, lease agreements, we have lease agreements. We don't just, these stores weren't put up by hand and can be torn down without any kind of, you know, problems. Right. Yeah, these are leased locations, which means you have a lease. And for any of you who have ever rented anything, you can't just leave, right? <laughs> you have to go talk to the landlord and be like, hey, uh, I need to move out. And they're like, oh, no, you can't do that. Well, I really have to. No. Sorry. Right. Why was this not thought about before they said that they and were going to close all their stores yes. wait a minute here's the that's the part that makes me upset is that the news now for the next year stuck in most people's minds is tesla must be going out of business because you said you were closing your stores if tomorrow walmart said we are closing all of our stores even if they were like but we're also going online no one would care Right? Because everyone would hear the closing of the stores and the online part, right, would be completely lost to them. They right. would have already been like, <gasps> Walmart's closing all their stores. They must be going out of business. It's true of any, practically any company right. that has physical locations. As, as soon as they say that they are closing all of their locations, you must be going out of business. They are going out of business. I, I can't think, would it be like vape stores that would be closing their store, but like, you wouldn't be like, oh no, probably because you don't care. <laughs> I'm trying to honestly think of any place that would close their physical locations that you wouldn't be like, oh my goodness, they're going out of business. And here's the other weird thing. Now test drives will only be available upon customer request. So wasn't the whole point of the store to give it a physical location to go take a test drive? I think it has always been this way where you kind of have to request the test drive. They are never, they're, they're hardly in locations that are just like, let's hop they're, in and go for a spin. They're not conducive, exactly. So and, here's, and that was a dumb thing. That was dumb. Just 
if we're picking on Tesla here, as soon as you get someone in the car, they're like, oh crap, <laughs> you just floored it. And my brain just went, right? Hit, right? There's a button at the back of everyone's head. And as soon as your brain hits that button, just kidding, this doesn't happen. That's called a concussion. You should be, you should call a doctor. But when you experience a Tesla test ride, you, you can't go back after no. that point. You're like, oh my gosh, this is seriously different. And Tesla's never been good about just like, let's go hop in the car, right? They should just pull up to you on the street and be like, get in, let's go, <laughs> sucker. That's They should have mobile stores. It would work like that. Yeah. And I mean, again, they have mobile stores. It's called Tesla owners. Yeah, it's because, called Dan and his new Model 3. Right, yeah. they are going to be able to sell the car most likely better than a store location, right? right? That's just off, if you said Dan, hey Dan, Dan buddy, <laughs> if you sell me some cars, we will come up to some agreement. And they used to have this. It was called the referral program. Oh, yeah. I remember that. But now that's gone. Yeah. So <laughs> what we're left with is just like... Everyone gonna... said the referral program was so expensive. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it was a lot cheaper than stores, and it was a way more effective. Exactly. I mean, if stores cost $1.6 yeah. uh it, it would cost... How many the... roadsters is that? Right. How many? Exactly. But, you know, today Tesla is raising prices. So they announced that all vehicles except for the $35,000 Model 3 will be going up in price by about 3%. Mm -hmm. This has caused a lot of upset people out there because for a while there was a price drop. In fact, you got to take advantage of it, right? You got autopilot and full self-driving during that price drop. It, it means that people are upset on both ends. There's the people who before the price drop were uh you know bought before the price drop and now they were upset like hey it's cheaper now and now there's people now who are like oh it's more expensive i didn't uh, my finances weren't considering this there's nothing to be done about this I, I think you know had the store closures been done in a more methodical way we wouldn't have had this this weird bounce where we're like we're gonna save 1.6 billion dollars then it's like just kidding no we're not <laughs> so yeah i mean that that's disappointing again with the thinking ahead a little bit that would have helped a lot so another thing we learned from an sec filing is that on march 10th tesla spent 13 million dollars of tesla shares so almost 50,000 shares to central valley auto transport incorporated in strathmore california in exchange for car hauler trucks and trailers why do you think they did that well uh i think that they need to transport a lot of cars that is part of their business but why not just rent trailers i think they are expecting to be sending a lot of cars all the time and so buying the 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 car haulers makes the most sense yeah so the tesla model 3 long range got more range it went from 310 miles or 499 kilometers to 325 miles or 523 kilometers wow how do they do that uh it was an over-the-air update mm, no no way that's i mean that's like downloading more ram you can't do that i know what they did they got a bunch of, of Tesla repair, mobile repair trucks, right? Okay. To drive out in the middle of the night, right? They jacked up all the Model 3s, the long range Model 3s. They got the little uh, little screwdrivers, right? The ones that you open the RC cars with. They unscrewed the little thing. They did the thing where they hurts their nails and they opened that. And then they popped in a couple more 2170 batteries. They closed it all up. They tightened it up with the screw. And then they lowered it down. They drove off into the night. And that's how everyone got more range. That's how tens of thousands of cars got more range overnight. Look, you can't over-the-air update more range, buddy. How are you going to do that? You need more batteries. Uh, well, it, it worked. Our car just got more range. Right, because they did it. They they snuck in. You, you're you dead asleep when you're asleep. Um, well, here's what Elon said. Uh -huh. We do find ways over time and have done this many times in the past where we are able to improve the efficiency of, say, the drive inverter or the motor or we get a bit more comfortable with how much energy you can extract safely from the battery pack without causing it long-term harm. Okay, so they didn't need to jack up the cars and add more batteries. No, they did over-the-air updates. So just by software changes, they're yes. able to... Inc that's insane. Also, they were able to give the Model 3 performance about 5% more peak power. And we heard that more models will be getting peak power soon as well. Just from software. Yep. That's amazing. So at the Model Y event, uh, everyone expected there was going to be some big reveal. Mm -hmm. and uh, They so did. It was the Model Y. We're going to be talking about that on In-Depth, um, so you can go check that out. But uh, so after the event, when no big reveal seemed to have happened, Kim from Like Tesla said, I think the one more thing tonight should have been Elon's sick shoe game, custom Tesla Jordans. But Elon said, 
There was something, but no one caught it. Yeah, so... And, uh, which was... What? Yeah, <laughs> Because I, mean, I was there, okay? I was in the front row. Now, to be fair, I was live streaming, so I was looking at my phone. I was not looking. I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't analyzing it. I had my analyst glasses on. You know what I was you know, doing? I every, every now and then I would... tape my eyes open. You, you know, I did every now and then I would look up from my little two-inch screen and I would go... <laughs> That's Elon, 25 feet from me. No, seriously. Um, um, but yeah, so... I e- didn't notice anything. I was... What, I'll yeah, tell you no what one, I was no expecting. One, no, it wasn't just you. Right. I mean, everyone was expecting... So, I had, I had talked to a lot of people in line at the event, and almost everyone was like, I really hope that they have a Model S refresh yeah. um, with like a new nose and a bigger battery pack. But I don't think it's going to happen. And they were right. It didn't happen. Right. We didn't see that. What I wanted to have happen was the... Uh, the pickup truck to zip across the stage to just hear like you're just sitting there and you just hear like and then it goes and then that was it well you you practically got that because after the event elon tweeted end titles from blade runner played after model y webcast cut about a minute in we flashed a teaser pic of tesla cyberpunk truck now this is the pic there it is can you so that's kind of like a pickup truck screaming across the stage. Because I can't tell what it looks like. Right. Is that the front of the truck? Is that the rear of the truck? Now, some people have tried to imagine what it could be. So here's a couple pictures of what it would be if it was the back of the truck. Which, to me, doesn't make any sense because I don't think you're even legally allowed to put white lights on the back of the truck. Okay, so if that's the case... Unless you're in reverse. Maybe it's in reverse. All right, well, then here's a picture of what it might be if it was the front of the truck. I also don't think that that's the pickup truck because that just looks like a Tesla semi to me. Okay, so here's my question. Mm. Why did Elon posted at all why did he take away from his own event with this nonsense like it's well, fun to be fair and, and i would love to do it a week from today but to, why do it then to be fair he didn't take away from his event because no one noticed it at the event he yes. had to tweet the picture out yes, in order but for he people created to see this news item that got tacked on to the model y right, event right which is confusing and it just adds more stuff to yes. the avalanche of news that is constantly coming out about tesla right. especially in these past few weeks um it's just been non-stop and you know other car manufacturers release these kinds of images where you can't tell what the car looks like at all it's just like a headlight and they're and they go like the frompa schmromp car is going to be we're going to release the uh unveiling of the reveal to the teaser image of the of the prequel of the soon to be model ormprofrump you know and they go cool right and but you know why they do that right because then the news picks up on that and they go look at we gotta look at the schmomper schmomp look at this and it shows a picture of the headlight and then they write a whole article going like we don't know what this is going to be but it is expected to have a range of 300 miles exactly. and we've heard that and we've seen that forever and then they come out with it and then you know the next month when all the news has died down they just give us a date and then they show us the same picture again and they go this is going to come out that a front patrol we expect a range but, to be 300 miles come out 2020 elon didn't even get that this time because he didn't tell anybody what this is he didn't right. tell them the range of the truck or when it's coming out right. so the news media didn't know what to do with it and so it, it was a wasted and all it, and it detracted had, from model y it's true all he has to do is come out with a press release where he gives just the he just gives a whoop, you can learn this bit of information here's <laughs> right. the picture right write me an article yes and basically the news media is going to go tesla who has been having trouble in the past has uh, come out with this interesting image of a image we don't know what it is or anything like that but we expect that the truck is going to be this much cost so much and right. come out in 2021 exactly that would be the story it would come out people would hear about it they go oh the tesla truck oh, exactly. i'm excited about it It doesn't come out on an earnings call where right. no one's going to hear about it because the news is you know tesla profitability it doesn't come out um at the model y unveiling when everyone should be talking about the model y because it's a freaking awesome car exactly that's what i'm upset about it's he doesn't control the message he knows that the media is stupid treat them like they're stupid and give them their freaking little press release it they can only take so much all they can take it's it's like um blues clues right they have their notebook with their crayon and they can write one thing on it Right. right and then they can flip to the next page and write their next clue exactly but in you can't be like Look at this. Look at that. Ho ho. Look at this. It's going to look like it's going to be cyberpunk and everyone's like like whose interpretation of cyberpunk? Right. Elon. It, it's frustrating and it it, it, it again, Well, and also he's so above us that his little clue nobody got it. The entire world missed it. It's not the point of Tesla to just confuse everybody, right? right. We're supposed to be unified on the same page on on climate change. Exactly. Um someone who has done a wonderful job 
at unifying people about uh, the need to address climate change is Greta Thunberg. Yeah. And she has just been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. She's the founder of Fridays for Future, where basically school strikes have been happening around the world. In fact, over 105 countries had a Friday school strike. And it's largely because of this 16-year-old girl. She was only 15 years old when she started it. Right. And, right? and she would sit on the parliament steps every Friday, demanding to her lawmakers to do something about climate change right. because it was going to affect her. And so she has passed on this uh, idea of protesting to your lawmakers um, every Friday instead of going to school because what's the point of going to school if your future is going to be Mad Max? Right. There's no point in you know learning the Pythagorean theorem if the most important things are going to like be how to make fire and hunt other humans. You know, like there's going to be no point to existence if if climate change is to continue continue at the rate that it is going. Right. I mean, she's one of 301 candidates, and she said on Twitter, I'm honored and very grateful for this nomination. Tomorrow, we school strike for our future, and we will continue to do so for as long as it takes. And you know what? Many politicians have opposed her, but many are now coming around, including Germany's Angela Merkel and Ireland's Leo Varadkar. Now, the funny thing here is that the mayors of many cities have gotten on board. Right. So the mayors of Paris, Milan, Sydney, Austin, Philadelphia, Portland, Oslo, Barcelona, and Montreal have all added their backing on Thursday. Um, Why do you think that is? Mayors are not um, national figures, right? They don't make policy for the entire nation. They only make policy for a city. And it is a lot easier for them to get stuff passed that the people want. And the people often want things to do with climate change to get passed, to to address climate change as quickly as possible. And a lot of these cities have plans to address climate change. And, and many of these cities are going to be affected by climate change in very negative ways. And they're on the front lines of being affected. Right. And do you know why, like, the mayors aren't being as affected as some of our other politicians? It's because there isn't really any money in mayoral right. campaigns. You know, there's local interests of like, hey, I really want this casino to be put in, or this business in particular in your city is very important, and I want it to go through. And so that there might be money there, but in terms of um, you know, big oil doesn't have its hooks into exactly. the mayoral campaigns. Exactly right. They're they're not like, oh, you better adopt a, a whatever climate change stance, or else you know we're going to fund this other guy and he's going to trample you in the election. And we're going to be talking about that more in future in depths. So get ready for that. It is time now for the lightning round. All right. Check this out, Jesse. One of Norway's largest companies, Orkla, has installed solar railings at their new headquarters in Oslo. Let's take a, take a look at this. Uh, just looks like a regular old railing, but on both sides of the railing Ooh. are solar panels. So what's cool is um, this one is on the sixth floor of an outdoor cafe roof terrace. What's cool is if you're up in, say, Oslo, Norway, the sun is really low all the time. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the morning, you get sun on one side. In the afternoon, you get sun on the other side. And it's, in fact, just as effective, if not more so, than solar panels at a 30 degree angle on your roof. In fact, these solar panels are estimated to generate 14 megawatt hours annually from just the railings. Just the railings, right? They yep. didn't like coat the side of the building or the top of the building. Nope. It's the perimeter around the top of the yeah. building. That's really smart. Yeah. This Montreal, Canada-based company, Lion Electric Company, has just announced the Lion 8, a class 8 truck specializing in urban deliveries with a 250 mile range and a 25,000 pound payload. This will be added to Lion's Electric's existing line of electric buses. Lion Electric spokesperson Patrick Gervais said, There are many uses for it. Anything in the delivery space. A lot of people will put a dry box on it, or the food industry, a refrigerator box on top of it. It could also be a garbage truck. We've added in a heating and cooling system for the batteries to make sure you lose no more than 10% in the winter. The company has the capacity to sell a thousand vehicles per year. Awesome. So up until now, if you live in Poland or the Czech Republic and wanted to buy a Tesla, you'd either need to buy a used one or travel to Germany to purchase one. But there's news from Business Insider Poland that Tesla is registering a corporation in Poland and is in the process of launching service centers in both Poland and Czech Republic. And some more good news, there could be big EV subsidies coming from the Polish government soon, up to 36,000 PLN, which is about $9,500, if draft regulations from the Ministry of Energy are approved. 
There were only 53 new Teslas registered in Poland in 2018. Well, let's change that. Yes. So check out this new electric bike, Jesse. Mm -hmm. I spoke with the co-founder and CEO, Taras Krabchuk of Tarform Motorcycles. They're based out of Brooklyn, New York, and they've been working on this bike for the past two years. They are now accepting pre-orders for their collector edition, which is coming out later this year. And I love that they have the goal of minimizing waste and they're fabricating parts with biomaterials, trying to make a sustainable vehicle. And what a cool looking motorcycle this one is. Absolutely. So Republican Senator Kelly Hancock introduced a new bill, SB 1415, that would ban Tesla from servicing its cars through its own service centers if it gets through the legislature. What kind of bill is this? How can you possibly make a bill that that just makes sure that one company in particular can't service its vehicles in an enormous state uh because it, this was obviously sponsored by the dealership association and they are running scared if passed it would go into effect on september 1st and let's let's face it they're desperate i mean we've got them on the ropes why else would they be trying to pass such a bill that does something so stupid so if you live in texas Contact your legislator, contact your governor, tell them how you feel. And call up this Senator Kelly Hancock and give him a piece of your mind. So this is a, hello, a representative democracy. No one should be preventing you from your freedoms just because someone has money and wants to keep it. This should not happen in this country, okay? It should not happen. It's absurd that they would rewrite the laws to basically single out one company. Yeah, an American company. So our friend Stefan sent us this from the Model 3 owner's manual in Norway after the latest software update. So now my Norwegian is a little rusty, but I think it says that the Model 3 can now tow 910 kilograms. That's 2,000 pounds with a tow hitch. And that's what makes this show so special is you guys. I mean, we are not sitting around reading the Norwegian owner's manual for Tesla, um, partially because we can't read Norwegian, but you're able to actually let us know that these things are happening. And this is really important because tow hitches in Europe mean a completely different thing than they do in America. So to Americans, a tow hitch is like, if you want to carry a boat or like a giant RV or, you know, big things. In Europe, you can just have like this small little trailer. It's basically like the bed of a pickup truck. You can just stuff a bunch of stuff in, you drive to wherever you need to, you unhitch it and, Boom, you suddenly don't need a pickup truck, which is why the rest of the world doesn't use pickup trucks, and we do. Good point. So nonpartisan business group E2, which stands for Environmental Entrepreneurs, found clean energy jobs increased in nearly every state in the U.S. last year. And they said this despite the impact of Trump's administration's tariffs on solar panels and market uncertainty from the administration's inaction and planned rollbacks of energy efficiency and clean vehicle policies. Yeah, take a look at this list of jobs here. These are seven different sectors of jobs, and they all were amazingly growing. In fact, look at this. I mean, clean vehicles, the jobs grew by 16% last year, mm -hmm. or clean storage grew by 14%. Right. Every county in the U.S., except for two, have clean energy jobs. So you're telling me that that's 110,000 new jobs. That is a 3.6% growth in 2018. And they outnumber fossil fuel jobs three to one. Mm -hmm. And now there are 10 states which generate more than 20% of their electricity from wind and solar. That's Kansas, Iowa, Oklahoma, North Dakota, South Dakota, Vermont, California, Maine, Colorado, and Minnesota. We got our first glimpse of what Tesla envisions the Shanghai China Gigafactory to look like when we were at the Model Y event. Mm -hmm. Elon said, things are moving fast. This will actually be once complete, the equivalent of our Fremont factory plus our Nevada battery Gigafactory combined. It's integrating the two, which kind of makes sense. This is what it will look like at the end of the year. Do you know what James Bond will be driving in the next James Bond movie directed by Corey Johi Fukunaga in April 2020? Uh, no, I don't even know who the next James Bond is going to be. Is it going to still be Daniel Craig? I think so. It's going to be the all-electric Aston Martin Rapid E, according to The Ooh. Sun. They're going to make 155 of these at the end of 2019, right before the movie comes out. Mm -hmm. um, and just to give you some specs here, that uh, James is going to be driving mm -hmm. 0 to 60 in under 4 seconds, uh, top speed of 155 miles an hour. He will have over 200 miles of WLTP range from a 65 kilowatt hour battery. Two rear motors will produce about 600 horsepower and 950 newton meters of torque. It'll be capable of 100 kilowatts or higher charge rates using an 800 volt battery system. And Her Majesty's government is gonna have to shell out about 250,000 pounds. 
Ooh, those are going to be expensive. But it's you know it's an Aston Martin. Exactly. Um. Do you, okay, but big question here. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're going to add engine sounds in the movie? I think Ooh. they might do that. I hope they don't. Please I think, don't. If I you're think watching in some scenes when it, it's zipping along, because right, you know, they don't show like the whole scene right that's far more boring all right identity. comment comment below if you think they're going to use engine sounds or not all right now everyone's wondering when the e-tron is coming out and get this jesse uh-huh. i hunted through the internet and i found this yes we, we have it here first oh great 2011 what? and look at it it looks great okay wait no no this is an this is a wired article back from 2009 2009 that's why they say 2011 right wait they so said, wait, wait wait so in 2009 they said they said the gorgeous e-tron electric concept car Audi's been showing off lately is more than a slick show car. It's damn near production ready and could be in showrooms by the end of 2011. Right. It's 2019, and I think they just began production, or the production is delayed. When people are like, oh, Tesla's competition is going to eat them for breakfast. This is why I laugh in their faces. I go, ha, 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 ha. No. Because they- there's no, like, this is why I can't take anything that these other car manufacturers seriously about they, they were only off by eight years eight freaking years can you imagine if, if elon was off by eight years do you know what they would have done with him you would be so mad if you had to wait eight years okay, for a but car you got to admit it looks really cool it looks cool there it looks a little bit less cool in real life the the actual e-tron doesn't how do you look know as how do you know what it because looks they like? finally actually showed us what the what the e-tron the the sedan e-tron what, did you is gonna see look one like up close well, we did actually see an Audi A3 e-tron in LA, which I, I mean, didn't looked, know existed. I didn't either. It right. looks pretty cool, but it doesn't look anything like that. No, it looks like an it Audi lo- A3. In fact, we walked by it. We didn't even notice until we saw the little right. sticker on it. Exactly. So get this. Mm-hmm. The New Mexico House passed the Energy Transition Act on Tuesday, 43 to 22. Great. What What does that mean? Um. Well... The governor's probably going to sign it because she's in favor of it. And uh, it sets the goal of 100% carbon-free electricity by 2045. That's awesome. I mean, that's a that's a very nice goal, 100% carbon-free. They want to reach 40% by 2025. Mm-hmm. And they want to reach 50% by 2030. Okay. Um, and then 80% by 2040. Okay, so they are actually have some goals on the way to that. They can't just be like, whoa, we missed it by a whole bunch. And Rivian has applied for a patent for a systems and method for reconfigurable electric vehicles. What does that mean? It means that they are thinking for the RT1, perhaps, um, that you could remove the back portion of the truck, so the bed of the truck, and put in different Ooh. beds, right? You could have different things that could go on it. You could have like a lower, uh, you know, bed of the truck you, Are you gonna be have able to some like motorcycle holder things i'm amazed that no one had patented this idea before i guess because it's an electric truck that changes everything i guess so but that's cool i mean why didn't tesla do that would you like a tesla semi truck for 250 bucks uh sh- sure how can i possibly get that price just go to that website yeah that's a that's a 124th scale truck oh Oh, it's not the... No, it's not the full Tesla semi Oh, I was wondering why it was so cheap. Right. It is 3D CAD drawing, so it's supposed to be accurate, like down to the millimeter. Right, and it looks like the real thing. Yeah. So I think there's going to be some, you know, returns <laughs> of people who are like, I was expecting a real truck. This was not as it was in the description. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. What do we got this week, Jess? We have John Mitchell talking about soap and shampoo to eliminate plastic bottles. Let's uh, let's see what he has to say. All right. Hello there, my name's Sean Mitchell, father of Now You Know's youngest man, Little Benjamin here. And I also have my assistant, Little Jackson. I'm here to talk to you about removing plastic from your bathroom. First off, we have an Amish bar soap made from vegetable glycerin, available on Amazon.com. This way, you get rid of your body wash bottles. Next up, I have a shampoo bar made in New England, the hill over from Zach and Jesse's house. Um, This one is good, makes a rich lather. You can also remove your conditioner bottle because it is so effective. So get rid of your shampoo bottle and your conditioner bottle. And the reason why this is so important is plastics never biodegrade, not for billions, perhaps trillions of years. 
So why that's important is that most of it ends up in the ocean, killing our sea life, greatly damaging our ecosystems. So if you uh, have kids, if you like kids, even just a little bit, we need to protect their future, we need to protect this earth for our future generations, or else there is not going to be an earth as we know it left. So this is Sean Mitchell reporting you for uh, Now You Know You Love. Thanks. What, that's... I didn't know you could get shampoo in a bar. You know I, what I didn't know? What? I didn't know you could get conditioner in a bar. What? <laughs> I mean, I just, I thought that, like, soap. It, I thought there was a law that it had to be in a bottle. It's like, uh, right. I and think. you know what's cool? You can use our Amazon affiliate code to go get those products if you want. Mm-hmm. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. So that- for those of you who don't understand how this works. Oh, okay. We have a, a Patreon page where you can help support this show. And for as little as $1 a month, you will get to see every time we do a Tesla Time News, we will also have a Patreon bonus stories. Um, and you will get to watch that for just $1 a month. And we do this every week. So that's four Tesla Time News a month, which means four Patreon bonus stories a month, which means that you get to watch a Patreon bonus stories. There's multiple stories for just a quarter. That's the price of a gumball. Wow. So we price is so cheap. Uh, well, we want a lot of people to see it. And we want a lot of people to support this show. So head over to patreon.com, search for Now You Know, and help support the show. All right, let's uh, let's go to the Patreon bonus stories. It's a Patreon bonus okay, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories, and it's time for our Patreon shoutouts. We have twenty awesome people to shout out to today. These are people who give five dollars or more to support our show every month. So thank you so much to Fabrizio Ferrari, Kevin, Neil Kelsey, Pontus Bengtsson, Johan, Bjorn Mitten. Matthew Graham Dronberger, Maximilian Deservitas, Eugene Lasartime, Chris Jones, Sean Frakes, Stephen Drumheller, Brad Leclerc, Joseph Greenwood, DJ Jacob Tao, Karsten Jasperson, Robert Longamore, Stephen McCulloch, Mark Byron, and Rob E. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. We can't do this show without you. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. Here we go. Our first one is uh, Tesla Motherfrunker says, any updates on the auto wipers? Elon said, software release later this week should make it better. How many other car companies can do that? Uh, None. And this one about Las Vegas is boring. Elon said, looking forward to building a boring company tunnel in Las Vegas, assuming to be operational by end of year. What? This year? (laughs) <laughs> that's the year he tweeted that it. that is so exciting can i just propose a new set of billboards as you're driving into las vegas from la mm-hmm. it's like las vegas is getting boring all right it's time for community mail time Community mail time. i can't thank our community of awesome viewers enough our friend andres in holland um that we told you about last week he got to go for a couple tesla rides and this was a very important day for him it was the last day of hospital treatments for him and some very special people with big hearts went out of their way to make Andres's hospital visit a little cheerier and gave him rides in a Model 3 and a Model X. We wish you all the best, Andres. Then, you know, the story gets picked up by a Brazilian magazine. I don't know. I teared up a lot this week as I was talking to the people involved in this. Mm-hmm. Um, people went out of their way in the Tesla community to make this little boy's day a little bit better. And I think hopefully it was a day that he'll remember and and hopefully someday he'll be driving around in a Tesla. So I don't know. Just thank you guys. What a wonderful community we have. Now, this is a special day, I'm sure. It hasn't happened to me yet, but uh, the day that Elon responds to your tweet. This is our friend Fred out in California. Elon said, in retrospect, lower price shouldn't have been offered. Was done so because some simply couldn't afford it. Prices revert to normal on Monday. And Fred tweeted out makes sense as an early adopter i hope we're still invited to early access program and are able to provide feedback to help make experience better for all owners elon tweeted back to him that's the plan cool what if if elon tweets to you that's the plan i just stop there that's the (laughs) okay just go to bed the rest of your day that's Uh, awesome okay all right you remember our friend Charlotte. She goes around giving people who drive EVs these special um, thank you cards. Mm-hmm. She now has her own YouTube channel. Awesome. It's called EV Thank You. Hello, my name is Charlotte, and this is my YouTube channel for my EV Thank You campaign. As I travel around the world, I will be taking you with me on my amazing adventures. 
I will be meeting inspiring people and giving each of them one of my EV thank you cards. For making that extra special commitment to go electric and help children around the world to breathe easier. She's going to be doing a lot of cool things on her YouTube channel, and we're just so proud of her going out there and making the world a brighter place. And on St. Patrick's Day, our buddy Craig, he shared these pictures and videos from three Model S's, three Model 3's, and two Model X's that were in the 50th annual St. Patrick's Day Parade in downtown St. Louis. You know what's awesome? Is that if you're in a parade with a Tesla, mm -hmm. you don't cough to death because you're behind some <laughs> sneaky car or truck right and you can hear yourself think just these right. silent vehicles yeah. going it's the perfect parade vehicle except people think that the parade's ended because they're just like oh is it oh i guess it's over i don't hear anything all right it's time for on air where we have our discord members uh one person every week asks us a question who do we have this week jesse this week we have steve um he has a question for us first off i am a big elon fan but I find it curious, while he complains about the shorts, he continually supports their cause by making poorly considered comments that cause the stock value to drop precipitously. What's going on here? I mean, that is a good <laughs> point. Yeah. I often feel like, Elon, you, you, you hate the shorts, right? And yet you always give them this ammunition. Um, wouldn't you be a bit more cautious about like how you go about... Uh, things that you say, uh, documents that come out, emails that you send. Why is it? Why isn't it? You know, proofread. I, I think I have an answer. Okay. I think it's all because of the platform of Twitter. So if you think about Elon, most of the time he gets into trouble. It's not from emails. It's usually from Twitter. Mm. And what does yeah. Twitter generally do? It's something that you do by yourself. Um, you you are reading a bunch of things. You get caught up in the moment, and you you write something. And I think no matter how brilliant you are, because obviously he's a brilliant guy, if you don't run some things past someone else or have a chance to calm down and think it through, you're going to say and do a lot of things like he does, which aren't super well thought out. And so I think that is why so many people would like to get him off Twitter. I, I love him on Twitter when he's just having fun and he's mm -hmm. just putting up silly things that won't affect the stock and that are personal to him, like things to do with knights and uh, Monty Python and stuff. But when it has to do with the, the stock, I wish that he would just have a buddy or a lawyer or somebody who he could say, like, I'm about to tweet this. What do you think? No, I think that's, that's a good point. I mean, I, I think he needs some guidance on some things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when he's, um, you know, when he's in front of a crowd, I think, honestly, in, in some ways, he's he's a bit better to the crowd specifically that's that's all there with him you feel that energy and um you know i felt that uh this thursday when he was talking to everyone and he was very good at, at communicating his point to across to to everyone and he you know he was feeding off of our energy and he was funny and he was able to you know he was himself which I think was good, but you got a, f a full long form version of himself. It was not confined to 240 characters. And, and I think the other part about Twitter is uh, anything on the internet, there's lots of negativity. And so um, when you're reading comments, so you, like YouTube comments, I get caught up in this a lot myself. You immediately want to just lash out at whatever the negative comment was. And on Twitter, he's getting a lot of them. Right. So I think that especially he tweets late at night off, oftentimes. And I think that his uh, thought process isn't working clearly at that point. It would be helpful if, if he would perhaps sit down and think a little bit about what he's going to say and perhaps consult some people, you yeah. know, about ideas that he has and uh, so forth. I mean, I realize that can't always be done for a spur of the moment sort of thing, but it would be helpful in terms of, I think, overall, you know, the stock and the, and the company in general. Yeah, I agree. And, and or just a long longer form response or announcement if he had a youtube channel i mean i know that i'm biased towards youtube channels but like if he had a youtube channel where he could sit down and just sort of talk about an idea i would love that that's actually a good point i've often thought that tesla should have a monthly or bi-weekly uh like podcast where all these kind of ideas that he wants to get out could be put out with him sitting maybe next to a couple other like JB and a couple other people where in a friendly atmosphere, they could get out some ideas to the public. Right. And get rid of all this negative crap on Twitter. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Steve. Okay, Zach. We're good talking to you and Jesse and keep doing a great show.
And remember, if you want to be on air, um, join our Discord. And uh, if you're at the $4 level, you can ask an on-air question to us. And if we choose it, we will be talking to you on air. All right, it's time for our Supercharge Reviews. What do we got this week, folks? Hey, Zach and Jesse. Welcome to London. The Tower Hotel, destination point Tesla. The hotel itself, it's a great holiday destination. It's a four-star hotel built in 1973, and it's situated on the north bank of the River Thames, just on the east side of the iconic Tower Bridge. The hotel has 801 rooms, sumptuous suites, 19 meeting rooms, a gym, two restaurants, a coffee bar, the Z bar and lounge, and the hotel can accommodate up to 600 overnight guests. Keep up the great work, Zach and Jesse. We look forward to your future content with excitement. This is Cam and Helen, Aussies visiting London, Tower Hotel, Tesla Charger number 74. Now you know. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Supercharger review here in Lovelock, Nevada. Just, uh, let's see, west of Winnemucca. It looks like it's a new supercharger. There are four stalls, one pull through and three traditional. We've got a Chevron gas station here. We've got a family dollar in the background there. We've got a McDonald's across the street and probably a few other, other things, but these are the close things by. Love all the things that you guys do. Keep it up. I'm here in Lusk, Wyoming at a four-stall supercharger at the Covered Wagon Motel, right there in the parking lot that's right off the road. So if you have your eyes open, you should be able to find it pretty easily. Had a little issue with one A charger, moved to two, got a little bit better charging results out of that. The Covered Wagon Motel is here. There's Best Western across the street. Looks like there might be a couple other places in town. Up the street, there is a subway and a Sinclair gas station that has some other food items as well. The lines were painted incorrectly the first time, then they moved them over to kind of line up a little better. We had to find a different angle to actually make the car line up with the charger well. So if there's multiple cars here, that might be an issue, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of traffic through these parts. So shouldn't be a too big of an issue. Aren't they the best? Those are awesome. Man, we thought of this, like, or I think someone suggested it to us, right? As an idea. Did well, we I mean, we first idea? started doing it on our road trip. And yes. then people were like, hey, you should do that on your show. Right. Good and point. And we were like, we can't do many around. There's only a few superchargers around us. Right. Could you guys help? And you did. Right. And now there are more superchargers. Let's talk about some of the new ones that came out just this week. Yeah. Um, the 12 stall in Gouda, Netherlands. Is this where Gouda cheese is from? Yes, it is. Hmm. I just made that up. I don't know. Maybe oh, it's come on. <laughs> the 10 stall in Abendra, Denmark. Number 253 in China. The 6 stall at the Yantai Huan International Hotel, China. The 6 stall at Nianjiang Lurajin, China. Number 438 in Europe. Number 1476 in the world is the 16 stall at Bonique, Netherlands. I might be stopping there on our Model 3 uh, Euro trip coming up awesome. soon. Awesome. Now it's time for Be Free, which is businesses for rewarding Elon employees. And we've got this cool one. As a proud Tesla owner who wants to support the efforts of everyone involved in making a difference to the world, we would like to thank each and every one at SpaceX and Tesla. La Fogata Mexicana Restaurant is offering 10% off the bill, excluding alcoholic beverages. So, I mean, that's in Nags Head, North Carolina. They we, have one location there. Yeah, they we, have other locations too. But We were driving right past it on our Florida road trip. Darn, if we had um, known. So for a past video, we did a little road trip a couple mm -hmm. of years ago that started this whole channel. Um, this was our first Model X road trip. So here's episode 11 uh, when we were in Portland, Oregon. We were shooting for, we we're going to make our own version of the Teslandia intro. Right. Um, pretty funny episode. Now, I understand that, you know, you have busy days and you just spent about an hour watching this show. I, I get that you're like, you don't, you have to, you know, go take a bath or something. But. If you watch episode 11 and you comment on it, I will try to get back to every single comment. Um, I'll try to get back to every single comment in the Model X cross-country road trip series. Wow. Um, I'll do my best, but uh, we, we shall see. So yeah, go go watch it because I think it's very important to understand why, why we're so crazy um, and talk about this stuff so much. It's because we've really experienced the awesomeness of electric transportation. And... Take the shot. Which doesn't make any sense unless you watch episode 11, part one. It's the Patreon giveaway. 
All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway, Jess. We are going to be giving away some cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Go get the thing of things. Okay, we're, we're going to be. What it is. We're going to be giving away some EcoWare stuff here. Uh, the winner is going to get an EcoWare t-shirt. Um, and this EcoWare is sustainably grown and harvested organic cotton from northern India. That means that the water from the monsoons feeds the cotton. So it's not like having to pump the water from other sources. It's just water that fell from the sky. Right. Oh, my gosh. A this card, card fell out. This card fell out. Is that the winner? This is the winner. Okay. I mean, come on. The card fell out of All the right. da- th- That's fate. Right that there. is fate. Right. All right. Who's our winner? Our winner is Tim Hibbets. Congratulations, Tim. Congratulations, Tim. You're going to get, you can either choose the ones we're wearing now, mm-hmm. or you can go pick up something else from ecoware.us. And you made it to the end of the show. Congratulations. You've yeah. done it. I think we should do right now, stop watching the show and go right over to episode 11 from our Model X road trip. It, that, that road trip is what started this, this, this whole thing. So if it wasn't good, you wouldn't be here. Right. Right? Well, but here's the funny thing. Right. A lot of you who are here never saw it. And we know that you haven't seen it because there aren't <laughs> enough views on those videos. We put a lot of time and effort into it. We almost killed each other yes. numerous times to make those for you. It was a, that was a long road trip. It was a 17-day road trip. Yeah. We drove from here in Boston all the way to San Francisco. Then we drove up the California coast um, to Portland, to Portland, Oregon. Which and then we drove all the way to Seattle. Yep. So which is all the way in the top yep. left hand corner of the United States. Yep. And then we drove all the way to Montreal. And this is before a lot of the superchargers that are here now were there. So I mean we still did it. Right. Um and it was awesome. Right. And that's, Twenty-five states. And that's you know what, that's kind of what proved to us in our minds. If it had sucked, I really don't think we'd be here right now. Oh, absolutely. We probably we, we would have been like, to Montreal. Yeah, and we would have just been like, I don't want to talk about this car. Right. Instead, it was awesome. Right. And, and we did this because we couldn't stop driving the Model X. Right. As soon as we got it, it was just like, wow, we Where should can we just... go? And the range was just so fantastic. And the superchargers were so amazing that we were just like, wow, we yeah. can just drive this until we hit another ocean, can't we? And we did. Yep. So you should go watch it. And then we're like, sure. can we go hit another country? Right. And I just want to take another moment to thank our patrons for supporting the show. All these names that you're seeing are people who support the show for $5 or more a month. Um, and they really make this show possible. Um, there's no way that we could have flown to uh, LA to cover the Model Y unveiling without their support. Oh. And there's so many more things that we could do with more support. Um, so, you know, if you haven't supported this channel, it would really mean that we could do just tons more exciting things. Yeah. I mean, we, we have need big to, things in store. Right. We like, are going to be driving around this country in a roadster. Yeah, I don't think enough people get that. A next the next generation roadster. We're going to be driving around this country and Europe right. in in the roadster. And not just for the sake of driving it. Right. It's to meet people. It's to meet lots of awesome, amazing people. And show them the car and show them the truck. Right. Oh, did I mention the truck? Oh, the truck. Oh, oh forgot oops. to mention the that. The semi-truck. The, yeah. the Tesla semi-truck. We're going to get one. Yeah. We're just two average dudes. We don't have like a trucker's license. Not yet. But we're going to get trucker's Gotta licenses. Get and we're going to be driving the truck all over the country. Right. That's going to be amazing. We're going to be taking... We're going to have a trailer, right? We, we're going to have multiple trailers. We're going to have one trailer just for, for cars. We're going to be bringing EVs mm-hmm. to the place where, like, we have one viewer and they have, they live in somewhere where they've never seen an EV before. And we're going to bring just about all of them to their town, wow. right? We'll just drive them all around town. We're going to be racing people in pickup trucks. It's going to be hilarious. Wow, we're going to get arrested a lot. No. We should get a lawyer. If any of you are lawyers out there, <laughs> yeah. we, we're going to need help you. The show. <laughs> That's just the beginning. And then we're going to have another trailer and it's going to be an off-grid house and and me and my girlfriend we're going to take it and we're just going to go and hide somewhere we're going to need a psychologist or something or psychiatrist because we're crazy (laughs) like we're certifiably crazy so i mean we have so many different plans and we can't do it without your support so again patreon has been a wonderful place to to get support from people um if you're like hey look i can't my budget is pretty set if your budget includes any amazon purchases uh, basically, as Amazon Associates, we earn money from qualifying purchases. So head on over. That we, we have a link to our Amazon Associate affiliate code. Right. Down one's below. for the U.S. and one's international. Yep. And, I mean, if you want some cool perks, I mean, like, we've got this cool uh, mug that you can get mm-hmm. on Patreon along with tons of other cool things right. like our Discord. If you're a Discord member, you can... Um, 
chat with us. You can, if you're a $4 Discord member, you can do our on air, which we just did. I mean, that's mm-hmm. really cool. Not, we're not getting enough questions, by the way. Right. Uh, uh, if you're on Discord at that level, ask some questions. Right. And we'll, and, we'll if, try and, answer. and if you hate the on air questions so far, if you thought that they were boneheaded questions they weren't though they weren't but if you think that you should head over to patreon and support us for the four dollar level and ask your own darn questions but anyway thank you so much for watching um it makes a big difference and what also makes a big difference is if you'd hit the subscribe button yeah um what that does is it allows youtube to let you know when one of our videos has come out did you see the number lately we're getting very close to a hundred thousand subscribers that's insane. It is insane. And it means that we're going to, you know, the world is going to kind of open up a little bit um, in terms of what we're going to be able to do. Basically, every uh, every new subscriber means that we are one step closer to being able to call up companies and be like, hey, we want to interview your CEO. Yeah. And they'll say, okay, we or we'll schedule that. Or we want to show you some new car or new bike or new right. scooter. Like that makes it possible. And they will send us one and we will be able to test it out and show you and tell you about it. And yeah. Say, this thing's good or this thing's crap. Um, yeah. We need more subscribers for that kind of stuff. So we got to go. We have to go. Oh, we have sweet. to start writing the news for next week because <laughs> probably some news came out as we were recording the show, um, which will happen next week. Um, we have to go record in depth. In depth is you're going to be able to see that tomorrow. Um, we're going to be talking about the Model Y unveiling. Okay, right. the Model Y, people. This is the bringing sexy back. I gotta go. Let's go. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Now Man. you know. <laughs>